Okay, welcome back to our third and final video for our discussion on circles from section 2.2. So we now know that we have the standard form, and I'll just shorthand, which looks like x um, minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And we also have the general form which we haven't talked a lot about, which is x squared plus y squared plus dx plus ky plus f equals zero. So if you want to convert from standard form to general form, what you will do is just do some distribution and simplification. However, if you would like to go in reverse order, it is quite a bit more complicated because you have to complete a square. So let me first do an example of the easier converting from um, standard form into the uh, general form. So let's go ahead and convert our last example, x plus four squared, plus y minus two squared equals 10 into the general form. So I really do mean just distribute. So we have x plus four times x plus four plus y minus two times y minus two equals 10. So then FOIL, that's probably how you learned this in high school, x squared plus 4x plus 4x to give me 8x plus 16 then plus y squared minus 2y minus 2y give me minus 4y and then plus 4 equals 10. Now let's try to get it so it looks exactly like this. So everything on one side, combine any like terms. So x squared plus y squared plus 8x minus 4y. And then it looks like I have plus 20 equals 10. And then for it to look exactly like this form, let's subtract the 10 to the other side. So I end up with minus 10 would give me equal zero. And you're done. So remember, this circle looks exactly like the circle from before. They're the same circle, they're just written differently. So don't be confused by that. If you graph them, they will look identical. Also notice now what these Ds, Es, that should be an E, and Fs are. There's D, positive eight, E is negative four, and F is 10. So I had mentioned previously that they just happen to be numbers. So in this example, those are the three numbers that would correspond to those three capital letters. So that's an example of going forward. But let's say you want to do this process in reverse. It's quite a bit more complicated because again, you have to do completing the square. So let's just practice completing the square. So let's go ahead and first write down a little three-step process that will help. What we're going to do is we're going to half it we're going to add it, and then we're going to, I'm sorry, we're going to square it. And then we're going to add and subtract it. And you'll see what I mean by it. So let's complete the square for x squared plus 10x. So my goal is to get this into a binomial squared. So this thing, that what we would normally call b in the quadratic formula, is the it. So it is the b from the quadratic formula. So let's go ahead and follow my directions. We will take that thing, write it down like normal, then take that, divide it in half to get 5, then you will add 5 squared and subtract 5 squared. So I didn't change anything, I just followed my little three steps. 
Now, this thing is factorable and it factors easily. You take a single X, the symbol attached to B, and then a single five and put it in a binomial and square it. Don't forget, you still have this minus five squared running around out here. So let's try it one more time. Let's do something like y squared minus, uh, how about 30? So write it down just like it was. Oops, that should be 30y. Now take that thing and divide it in half and you'll get 15. So then add 15 squared, subtract 15 squared. You do it in that order every time, it'll always work. Now this is factorable and we get the y, the symbol, and the 15. Put that in parentheses and square it. And then don't forget about this one out in front. So that's just a really quick review of how to complete the square. This is the key for doing all of that. So we're going to use this technique to complete the square on an example going from general to standard form. So my final example for today is to write the following equation, x squared plus y squared plus 2x minus 6y minus 6 equals 0 in standard form. So you might ask yourself, why would you ever want to do this? Well, as I look at this equation, it is not clear to me where the center is, and it is not clear to me what the radius is. But if I write it in standard form by completing the square, that will become a lot more clear. So the first thing that we're going to do is group our x's together and group our y's together. And then we'll have to complete the square twice, once here and once here. So let's start with the x's first. Divide two and a half to get one. Squared one, add and subtract. So that takes care of that one. Then do the same thing for the y's. So then take six and divide it in half to get three. Square it, add it, subtract it. And then don't forget about the rest of the equation. So minus six equals zero. Now let's start our factoring. So remember the point is to get these as binomials squared. So pull the x, the symbol, and the one. Don't forget you still have minus one squared or minus one. Then do it for the y's. So then I will have y minus three squared. Don't forget you have this minus nine, minus six and equals zero. So then finally I have x plus one squared plus y minus three squared. And then let's move all of this to the other side to give me positive 16. Now, from here, you can quickly identify the center and the radius. So remember, let's start with the easy part. The radius is just the square root of this thing, so 4. Then the center is given by these numbers. So this is a little bit tricky. It's opposite of what you think. If this is a plus sign, the center will be a minus sign. So if that's positive, this one should be negative. If it's negative, this one should be positive. So that will help. Now, let's just finalize our answer, just like the previous ones, by quickly putting this in decimals. So I will screen share. And then let's go ahead and clear all of this out. So my equation, x plus 1 quantity squared plus y minus 3 quantity squared equals 16. So there's the circle. Then let's make sure I have identified the center in the correct place. Sure enough, negative 1, 3. 
And then if you went over, you could see that's a distance of three. So again, some quick review of completing the square. For these problems, we had to do it twice in order to get it into standard form. So we will quit there for today, and I will see you Thursday during Zoom. Have a good evening.